हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माई चैनल क्लिनिकल बायो केमिस्ट्री डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट बायो मार्कर एंड वी विल टॉक अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ बायो मार्कर क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ बायो मार्कर एंड देन वी विल टॉक अबाउट सम ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ बायो मार्कर सो लेटस अंडरस्टैंड वट इज बायो मार्कर वी विल सी द इंट्रोडक्शन बायो मार्कर कॉमनली ऑल्सो नॉन एज बायोलॉजिकल मार्कर दैट इज नॉर्मली इट इज एन मेजरेबल बायो मोलिक्यूल्स विच नॉर्मली कैप्चर्स वट इज एक्जैक्टली गोइंग टू हैपन इन आर body in our cells or in a tissue or whole organism so this normally gives us information about our body biomarkers normally also serving as an early warning system for our health so it gives any kind of uh, indication of our health information of our health like some of the examples are like a high level of lead in our blood streams may indicates the need of a test for nervous system because lead normally going to poison for our nervous system and cognitive disorders especially in the children's similarly high cholesterol levels uh, increases the chances of heart disease or cardiovascular disease so this is one of the biomarkers high cholesterol level is a biomarker for cardiovascular disorders many biomarkers normally gives by simple test like whenever we are visiting the doctors like routine tests like blood pressure body weight body temperature these are the normal biomarkers but there are some biomarkers which normally requires the specific test from the specific samples like blood samples urine samples or tissue samples so for that one we require a specific test either these test for the biomolecules like carbohydrate proteins dna or some other things or sometime we are up to going up to the molecular level for genes also so biomarkers uh, normally uh, playing a important role in illuminating relationship between the environmental exposure human biology and the disease similarly at the same time uh, scientists also use these biomarkers for better understanding of the fundamental biological processes or some kind of uh, for for the research for the treatments so these biomarkers have multiple uses so, uh, if you see the biomarkers the simple biomarkers are biological characteristic features just i have told you uh, like blood pressures body mass index tumor volume blood sugar level or body temperature blood pressures all these are simple biomarkers but there are some specific biomarkers which need to be tested that i will example i will give you in the later on whenever uh, which biomolecules or which things can be called as a, bio, a specific biomarker an ideal biomarker for that one there are certain characteristic feature so the features are uh, those molecules should be safe and easy to measurable it should be cost effective if, efficient uh, for the follow up or the further for the test it should be mod modifiable with the treatment and it should be consistent across the genders and ethnic groups normally it should not change from uh, gender to gender or through person to person or from geographical regions so these are the characteristic feature of an ideal biomarkers if you see the classification of biomarkers roughly we are having these are the classes of biomarkers like we can have diagnostic biomarkers monitoring biomarkers pharmacodynamics or responsive biomarkers predictive biomarkers prognostic biomarkers susceptibility or risk biomarkers and safety biomarkers if you say what is diagnostic biomarkers which confirm the presence of a disease or medical conditions Monitoring, monitoring biomarkers normally assess the presence, status, and extent of a disease or medical conditions. So, to evaluate the response of an intervention or any treatment, pharmacodynamics or responsive biomarkers are uh, used for the evaluating the response of a medical condition or a clinical intervention. Predictive biomarkers help us to uh, pro uh, identify the probability to developing a specific clinical disease or clinical conditions. Uh, prognostic biomarkers help us to identify the likelihood of a clinical event. a disease reoccurrence or the progression of a in patient diagnosed with a clinical uh, disease or having a medical conditions susceptibility or risk biomarkers normally gives us the risk of factors for a medical certain medical condition and safety biomarkers normally predict the toxic adverse effect in, uh, induced by drug medical intervention or certain environmental agents so these are the basic broadly classification of the biomarkers bi If you see the diagnostic biomarkers, we are having inflammation or oxidative stress, metabolic disease or kidney toxicity. Similarly, susceptibility hormones, growth factor, and nutrition analytes. If you see the prognostic metabolic disease, growth factors, and kidney uh, toxicity. Monitoring, we, uh, we are going to use antibodies, inflammation, and oxidative stress for biosafety, psychological stress, growth factors, and nutrition analytes. Predictive, it can uh, hormones, metabolic disease, 
and growth factors and pharmacodynamics or responsive will be alcohol use and uh, psychological stress so uh, some of the definitions of some of the other terms which we have you not used there like clinical biomarkers these clinical biomarkers are biomarkers that are used in clinical research or in a clinical practice therefore all biomarkers can be considered clinical biomarkers when used in the clinical application so any of these eight classes uh, any biomarkers can fall into the clinical biomarker category antecedent biomarkers are we can use antecedent biomarkers to evaluate the risk of an individual developing a certain illness like washington university uh, is currently conducting a study on to the antecedent biomarkers for alzheimer disease where they are going to uh, find out the exact risk for alzheimer disease a screening biomarkers normally medical researchers use a screening biomarkers to screen out the subclinical disease which do not present in a definite or easily observable symptoms so there we are going to use a screening biomarkers diagnostic biomarkers normally used for the confirming the presence of a particular disease like high blood sugar is a diagnostic biomarker for type 2 diabetes prognostic biomarkers are having various applications they can help us to predict the future progression of an individual's disease and how likely disease reoccurs like we can use the mutation of a breast cancer genes BRCA1 or 2 to evaluate the probability of second breast cancer. Imaging biomarkers are biomarkers like by, uh, that can uh, be detected from an image like metabolic active tumor volume uh, which can be seen by the PET scan. Molecular biomarkers are the non-imaging biomarkers which has biophysical properties and thanks to their biophysical properties which can may be measured as a uh, in the biological sample such as blood or cerebral spinal fluids cholesterol level uh, of blood can act as a molecular biomarker for cardiovascular disease now these data whatever biomarkers data we are going to use these data help us to identify a biomarkers to confirm they are suitable for a specific application such as diagnostic prognostic risk or evaluation or certain other uh, features like if you see the some of the examples of the biomarkers are blood glucose levels normally high blood glucose level can indicate diabetes or pre-diabetes so monitoring blood glucose is a crucial for management of diabetes second one is c-reactive protein crp which is an active phase proteins uh, you can call it positive phase proteins so that is a marker for inflammation of the body uh, disease in our body elevated crp level are associated with the various inflammatory condition and call can be used for assess the cardiovascular disease then PSA, uh, prostate specific antigens, this is a biomarker for prostate cancer, elevated PSA level in the blood can suggest the presence of prostate cancer. Troponin, uh, we are having three different kind of troponins. So troponin is a biomarker for diagnostic of heart muscle damage or stroke or disease. Uh, then we are having BNP, uh, by brain natriuretic peptides and N-terminus pro-neutrotic peptide that is anti-pro-BNP. These are biomarkers to diagnose the SS heart failures. Elevated level indicate the heart muscle stress. Hemoglobin H1AC, HbA1c that is called glycated hemoglobin. This is a biomarker for roughly 90 to 120 days blood sugar level and that is a monitoring for the uh, biomarker for the diabetic management. Then we are having cholesterol level which is a good biomarker especially LDL is a good biomarker for cardiovascular disease. HER2, that is the human epidermal growth factor 2, this is a biomarker for breast cancer. It helps to determine the aggressiveness of the cancer. Then CA125, uh, uh, that is a biomarker for ovarian cancer. Elevated CA level indicates the presence of ovarian cancer. Amyloid beta or top protein, this is a biomarker for Alzheimer's disease. Elevated level of amyloid beta or top proteins are in the cerebrospinal fluids. Or uh, neuroimaging can be indicative of Alzheimer's disease. Procalcitonin that is a risk uh, for the uh, normally rising into the bacterial infection so it can be differentiating between the bacterial and viral infections. Creatinine that is a uh, byproduct or the last metabolite product of the creatine or creatine phosphate and that is a biomarker for the kidney damage. Last is urine pregnancy test that is a, we are doing normally by HCG human chorionic gonadotropins that is a biomarker for pregnancy test to check the presence of hormone during the pregnancy. So this was something about the biomarker, their information, their classification, some of the examples. Hope you understand what is biomarkers. Uh, later on we will talk about the specific biomarkers uh, one by one. So thank you very much. Uh, if you like the video, press the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, you can subscribe it. If you have any question, any comments, you can write in the comment box. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.